What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be talking about the top three best moves that wide receivers can do at the top of the route, okay? So we're going to be talking about how you guys can create separation. The top of the route is what gets you guys the most separation on any route that you run against man coverage, against zone coverage, against off man, and all the above. So I hope this video gives you guys some value and it teaches you a few new things just about how you can get more separation from a DB. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you're maybe not sure the specific things that you need to do on the field to work these top of the route moves, you're not sure all the specific drills with sets and reps that you need to do, check out that very first link in the description, fellas, for our four-week-long wide receiver on-field workout plan. So what you'll get access to is 28 days of workouts broken down to a specific booklet where we talk about what you need to be doing to improve your route running, press releases, and all the above, your hands, explosiveness, and then we break down each drill with our 30-minute long instructional video. We explain the importance of each drill, and we show a full-speed example. So I hope you guys could check that out. Very first link in the description below. Let's get started. So this first move we're going to be talking about, pretty simple, is this trigger step snap down. Okay, so it's going to be used on a comeback route, a curl route, and then the occasional dig route. Okay, so now what is snapping down? Snapping down is like uh, you've heard all the old school coaches say before. Okay, at the top of the drought, you want to beat the drum. You, I call it milking the cow because that's what it looks like. Where the guys chop their feet, they bow, they chop their hands. They're play, like they're playing the drums, and they have this very slow down break into the top of this route. What you want to make sure that you're able to do is that you're able to drop on a dime, and that's what a snap down does. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, a snap down is this position right here where you get to this bam you break in stride on one leg you almost pretend like there's a string attached to your chin and you pull it down to your knee you're essentially just dropping your pad level because this is how you're able to decelerate when selling vertical okay so the whole point of people even snapping down in the first place is to get this db to be exactly where he is this db it, it, how you get separation is this is this is a common thing that we talk about on this channel for those of you that don't know is that we're constantly trying to sell vertical we are constantly trying to get this db to turn and run commit to the faith think that this quarterback's just going to drop this thing right over the top. And how I do that is by having great body language, staying in stride, and having great speed. Now, again, if I were to go up into this break and I were to try to break this thing off and I was super tall and this receiver had his chest up in the air, right, and he wasn't getting low enough, he would drift off of this thing. He would waste all this time at the route and this DB would be able to sit on it, right? So the suddenness of this break, one, will help you make a tighter change of direction, but being sudden with your hips and being violent with your hips is the only way I'm able to change direction while running full speed. You're not able to change direction when you're not, when, when you're running full speed, you're not able to change direction without dropping your hips. So you got to make sure that it's a violent drop because this gets you into an explosive position. Okay. So now this explosive position is what allows you to accelerate back to the ball. So there are three phases of every single route. You got the stem, you got the break point, then you got the acceleration. So you see this explosive point that he gets to right here where he drops his weight. This is a spot where he can create energy. He kind of pops up towards the end here a little bit, but that hip drop right there creates creates energy with his hips to where he could actually drive and accelerate and win this race back to the ball. Because the ultimate end game is, can I get to this spot before the DB can get there? That's the name of the wide receiver position. And that's why that snap down is so much better than beating the drum. Because when you beat the drum, let me tell you this, fellas, this DB is looking for any kind of indicator. He's watching your pad level. He's getting a feel for your stride. He's getting a feel for your speed. So if you start to raise your chest up and you start to chop your feet, what happens to the DB? He starts chopping his feet and he starts slowing down. When you start to slow your speed down, DB starts to slow down. When I start to look with my eyes towards that break point, DB is going to sit on this thing, right? So you've got to make sure that you're a salesman and how you're able to change direction while being a salesman on a curl route, a comeback route, and sometimes a dig route is by being violent with your hips and snapping down. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. There's a great example of how you guys can snap down, how to snap down and use that trigger step to drop your hips so you could create energy and decelerate on a dime. Now, let's talk about this second move here. We're going to be talking about a rocker step, okay? So a rocker step is one of those moves that you can use on a lot of different routes, okay? So now a rocker step is essentially like a double move off the line, right? So we've all seen guys line up and they do like a quick one, two, right? Like, let's say you wanted to take an outside release. Judy would go out, then in, he'd give a right left and then take the outside release. That's essentially what it is, but it's at the top of the route. So the same principle applies, right? So I want to run, he's running a corner route, right? So when we get to the top of the route, you want to step to the side that you're going first when you're doing a rocker step. So I got to run a corner. I'm going to step to the corner first and throw my body back to the post. So a rocker step is those great one of those moves, like I said, you can use on a lot of different things. I teach my receivers specifically. We use it on posts, we use it on corners, we use it on digs, and we use it on out routes. Anything that involves a single cut, okay? Now, obviously, there, there are exceptions, like maybe you got to run a fade and you got a zone cover 
coverage DB, then you hit him with a rocker step to the inside, you slip back. Obviously, there are a lot of different exceptions for this, but those are the main four routes, ins and outs, and then posts and corners. That's when I use this thing. So now, when we get to here, the mechanics of this rocker step is we're trying to make this DB think what? I'm trying to make him think that I'm running a post. I'm just hitting him with one single cut, and I'm going back to the inside. So what do you think is important that I sell with? My upper half, right? Because this DB is supposed to be, his eyes are a little high. As a DB, you're not supposed to be watching the head and shoulders. You're supposed to be watching your hips and that number. So you got to make sure that you sell with your entire upper half because we don't know what he's looking at, right? Because I restacked. I'm over the top. You could work this move when you've restacked the DB like so. And what restack means is when you get over the top and he's trailing your back hip. Or when it's like, let's say the receiver's lined up right here and you got a DB who's like inside shade and off man, you could square him up, then hit him with a rocker step and then go. So those are the two situations. I don't like it against zone coverage because it's not necessary. Zone coverage, they're not playing you. They're playing the zone. So when I get to the, up to the top of this route, you see how he goes one, the first step. Everything about this has to look like a post. Now, when he goes to the second step, you see how his hips and his shoulders are both going down that lane. That is the most important thing to get this DB to jump because a lot of guys will just step. They'll just take two hard steps, but their hips and their shoulders stay square. That doesn't sell anything. And then a lot of guys will take two steps and they just lean with their head and their shoulders. They just give a little lean. That doesn't do anything as well. You got to think of it like you're playing basketball and you're doing a crossover. You're throwing your hip to the outside. Hips and your shoulders are both committed down this post to get this DB to try to undercut it. And then I could slip back over the top and create that energy and get out. Now, how that cut, fellas, gets a little bit more explosive, right? So we talked a little bit about how to sell it. So now how the cut gets explosive is you want to make sure that when you make that cut, you're not cutting on the inside arch of your foot, you're cutting on the balls of your feet. But when you go to push, that's when you push off the inside arch. By inside arch, I mean that little like you look at your foot right now, you see how your foot's arched. The inside of that, because that's what pushes and gives you explosion. It's like a pitcher when he's coming off of a mound, he's pushing off of that rubber. You want to think of it like you put your cleat in the grass and you're pushing off of that grass to where you throw to the inside and you catch yourself. And that shin angle should be at almost a 45 degree angle inward to be able to get you back out. Okay. So that's a perfect, that's a textbook rocker step that you guys can use. We like to use this against press man when I restack off man when I'm closing the distance. Don't want to use it against zone. Against zone, let's just get up into that route. So that's a great example of how to get separation with a rocker step. Let's watch this thing again from Judy. Great job taking the inside release as well on an outside breaking route. That's another move that you can use for that specific situation. Okay. So now next release we're going to be talking about here is this peak back method. So the peak back method is a great release that you guys can use when you have to, when you have to run an outside breaking route. Okay. So a lot of guys, um, don't necessarily know when to use this correctly. They'll use this type of a move on, um, like an inside breaking route. It just doesn't make sense. Right. So we're going to look at this route from Keenan Allen. Let's play it full speed. So he comes up, he gives this move, restacks, gives a little peek back, then breaks this thing right off. Now, the great part about this release here is that he does such a good job of selling with his eyes, but not only with his eyes, his shoulders and his hips are committed to the break point, like I was talking about, because a DB ain't supposed to be looking at your eyes. A DB is supposed to be looking at your body. He's supposed to be watching your hips, he's supposed to be watching your torso. So that's what we have to sell this route with. I have to actually sell this route with my upper half, right? So when he goes up into this route, it's super important that when you guys peek back for the ball, so like, let's say simple example, right? Let's say it's like press coverage and let's say you got to run a 10 yard out. When you get to about maybe like eight yards, like your second inside step, you start to peek back for this ball, right? But what a lot of receivers will do is when they get to this spot and they start to peek back for the ball, their chest will raise up and their stride gets super choppy because they're not used to peeking back. And when they peek back, their pad level goes back. You want to think of it as just a little glance over this shoulder because we're trying to just get one more added icing on the cake to make this DB think that it's a fade. Make him think that, oh crap, he's getting this ball over the top. And then we just break this thing right off and we're not there. So I only like it on outside breaking routes because this DB is going to try to overcommit to the inside. He's not going to try to play it to the outside, right? So there's a great example of Keenan Allen holding his eyes to the last possible second. You see how he doesn't just peek back right before he's making that break? That's another mistake that guys will do. They'll run up and let's say again, let's use the 10 yard out for example. They'll get right to nine yards then they'll start to peek back for the ball and then they break it off. That's not even enough to get the DB. You got to hold your eyes there. You got to be a salesman with your eyes to really make this DB think that you're going to be getting this thing over the top. He kind of took a post stem on this so he's really trying to sell the post and then break this thing right off and be able to accelerate. That's the number one thing, fellas. This is how you get that kind of separation at the top of the break using that peak back method. But make sure if you're a younger receiver, you're not doing that peak back method till you have it down where you can sell vertical entirely, drop on a dime entirely, and be able to get out of this route without having any kind of indicator with your pad level and indicator with your speed that allows this DB to react on the break that you're making. Okay, so that's the third best move that you guys can use. So number one, we got that trigger step where we're snapping down. Number two, we got that rocker step. And then number three, we have that P 
peek back technique. Let's watch it again full speed right here. Great job by Keenan Allen selling this thing with his eyes and then popping this thing right off and accelerating out of that break. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. I always appreciate the feedback. It helps me come up with new ideas for videos in the future. So I definitely, definitely appreciate it. And again, fellas, four week long on field wide receiver workout plan, all the specific things wide receivers need to do on the field to take their game to the next level. We break it down in specific sets, repetitions, overall things that you guys need to do. And we include a 30 minute long video. We break down each day of the plan, the importance of each exercise, and just how you guys can do that exercise full speed. Hope you guys could check it out. Very first link in the description. I'll see you guys next time.